I'm going to introduce this item. Okay, Joe. So, uh, we have officially been part of the uh, Natural Resources Agency for, uh, what, 20 years or so, 15, whatever it is. And um, much as I love uh, Jerry Brown and uh, appointed by him, um, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy was not uh, really incorporated in part of the part of the world of uh, state government. Uh, I want to say that um, Governor Newsom has changed that, and most importantly, Secretary of Natural Resources uh, Agency, uh, Mr. Crowfoot, has really changed that in a substantive way. And I don't mean just as part of a, um, you know, official general services um, organization chart. Uh, no, this is part of what's really happening uh, every week in the world. And I want to thank Amanda for being part of that uh, and the entire Natural Resources Agency. So when we have the opportunity here, with the governor's uh, incredible 30-30 program. I mean, um, it is not just an aspirational program. Because it has metrics associated with it, it means that the folks that are responsible for implementing it have a metric responsibility. That is so important, a metric responsibility, number of acres, how do you put it in? How does it fit and make it happen? And you know what? That is that is a universally, I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit beyond here. This is a universally um, existentially revolutionary approach. Metrics, policy and metrics, policy and metrics. So we are very happy. As a metrics organization, we tell you every 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 meeting how many acres we've moved forward, and it is really exciting to us and to me personally to be able to say to you that we have a presentation. We give it over to Paul, a presentation that can make a meaningful, meaningful contribution to the governor's. 3030 program. So advisory committee, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. You're in there. I think what we need, excuse me, what we need is uh, a presentation by Paul. We need the PowerPoint. We need the PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. So to start with, everybody, the 30, the 30 means 30% 30 of the land in the state saved by 2030. And this is kind of how the Conservancy can participate in implementing that, getting that 30% next. And these are all excerpted from the executive order, uh, all the different things where the Conservancy's actions can implement the executive order, a whole bunch of different outcomes. The, I'm not going to go through them all. We can um, provide this PowerPoint to other people, but the, the, going through the course of the slides, we highlight each of these that are on the screen now. Next. And this is just how they're actually put in the executive order. So I'm not, this is just more to see their context. Next. And as far as the influence of the Conservancy to work on the 30%, you can look at our, the area of influence from the Conservancy stretching from the coast to a spectrum deep up into Edwards Air Force Base, across multiple mountain ranges, many counties, and huge watersheds. Next. This is our current legislative boundary of the Conservancy, including the new addition where that's put us up into the Condor Wildlife Refuge by Hopper Mountain. Next. And then, in a, but in addition to that boundary, there are all these different JPAs that the Conservancy is a part of that expand the influence of the Conservancy to encompass more territory to work towards that 30%. And this is not even all of them, but these are the main ones listed there and who the partners are. Next. 
And so here you go. This is a, a, a first ever done slide that shows the expanded expansion areas of the different JPAs with Wicca down in the southeast and a wildlife corridor conservation authority and then the desert and mountains conservation authority with huge additions via the Antelope Valley Resource Conservation District even into Kern County covering all the way up into the towards the Tehachapi's and on um, almost all of the National Angeles National Forest. So Paul, let me just uh, interject here. We were approached by the Antelope Valley Resource Conservation District who partnered with them. And it's been a very uh, interesting and rewarding partnership uh, to be part of an entire uh, different kind of ecosystem, um, sharing a lot of our uh, common uh, concerns and interests, uh, but also uh, we had a learning curve. And so I wanted to point out to you that this was an initiative on the Antelope Valley um, RCD to say we need partnership with the state agency. And so it's a very um, happy um, relationship. And I want to just point out, uh, I'm not sure that we, we emphasize that enough. We don't have that many agenda items, uh, but the impetus for all this, uh, very important, was uh, the uh, explosive expansion of solar energy projects, and they needed mitigation. And the Antelope Valley area said, well, we need a sophisticated mitigation partner if we're going to have these mitigation areas for solar and so that was the impetus for joining with the Santa Marta Mines Conservancy which has uh, really have a certain um, um, ability to to deal with these mitigation issues uh, and to join with the Animal Valley RCD uh, because of the, the solar explosion and uh, Paul how, how many acres approximately have we uh, we've been able to save as a result of that. Well, the, our JPAs alone, about 600, but in addition, there's a, there's a, a nonprofit called the Transition Habitat Conservancy, and as far as mitigation, they're up in the thousands. Right, thank you. Paul, oh, I have uh, a question. <laughs> Paul? Yes. <laughs> Is that one? Up at the top of the map, there's this dotted line. What does that represent? The Kern LA County boundary. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the Antelope Valley RCD actually uh, goes into Kern County uh, to include some of the um, important habitat areas there. Next. So for the rest of the slides, this is the boundary that we use for sort of the base of what I'm going to show you. It's just basically the last slide with the JPA stripped off it. Next. So to, just to give you an idea of the diversity and the biodiversity within that area, this is the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's Cal, uh, Natural Diversity Database. And these are all the different hits of sensitive species in that area and, and their little dendritic patterns of the little streams and riparian areas too that are hard to see. So you really pretty much can't go a more than two millimeters on the slide without hitting something of great importance. Next. And then of course, we've got the new uh, candidate listing of the uh, evolutionary significant populations of mountain lions in the Santa Monica Mountains and in the San Gabriel Mountains and some of the other Southern mountains that we're, we need to protect uh, property for. And then just to call attention is that within this area, even within the conservancy zone now, all of these species exist, uh, these aquatic, uh, federally and state endangered species, both fish and red legged frog. Next. And then of course the uh, key guidance for a lot of our work and a lot of other agencies work are the South Coast missing linkages that connect the Sierras via the Tehachapi's and uh, San Bernardino National Forest, the Angeles Forest, and down into the Santa Monica Mountains through these very carefully scientifically mapped out corridors 
and you can just see how we're, our territory is part of that game to connect the mountain ranges regionally and then the whole state for that matter. Next. And then this is just a, a not even a full a set of the different um, conceptual air protection plans which are necessary to get funding from the Wildlife Conservation Board that are within this area. You could probably add at least another third more area, just they're really not supposed to be that um, public. And so we didn't put other people's caps on there, but there are many, many um, of these that require uh, funding to fill in the gaps to connect the mountain ranges. Next. And then just an example of how good the Wildlife Conservation Board has been to our area. These are projects are, uh, that were funded by the WCB within this area, just all over the map. And this probably is not even a complete set either, but it's, it's, it's representative of that uh, broad spectrum. Next. And then of course, there's the LA County's uh, significant ecological areas, which are um, part of the general plan that are huge swaths of really important habitat, a lot up in the um, Antelope Valley and many others throughout the, throughout the zone that are within the conservancy's area of influence. Next. And of course, we've got the, the uh, wildlife bridge over the 101 freeway in Agora Hills that the MRC and the conservancy are working on, or Caltrans, next. And just to give a, a sense of this is where the MRC now manages properties for all the different agencies within this uh, the, the boundary of the conservancy's area of influence. Give you a feel for that. Next. And this is currently your the conservancy's work program as amended to, as of today. And you can see it's almost half a million acres uh, spread all throughout the zone and even outside of the zone. Next. And part of what the 3030 plan is, is they want a lot of coordination among staffs for data sets and that thing. And we're just so lucky to have such a good GIS coordinator on the MRCA staff. And people don't get this slide, but it's rare that you see mountain lions cooperating like this rather than fighting. Next. And then what Joe was mentioning was this plan that uh, Jerry Brown moved forward to start these regional conservation investment strategies through the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And the Conservancy is a sponsor of the Desert and Mountains Conservation Authority's um, conservation investment strategy in the Antelope Valley, this whole southwestern corner. The next slide will show the same area too. Uh, and it, what it is, there's a part of that plan which is about to be adopted by the CDFW is there's an incredible constraints analysis and bi uh, biological uh, inventory done within this area that was part of the whole solar, uh, federal solar uh, EI, EIR, EIS that was done throughout for all the different deserts. And so there's phenomenal amounts of data behind this document, um, wildlife corridors, endangered species, etc. Next. And then of course, you know, we're working to on the more focused level, working to, as you've seen, you've adopted this habitat linkage planning document to try and get the city of LA to um, find some nexus in its land use decisions. The next slide is a zoom in on that red box. We come up with these um, planning maps so that the city, when the projects come in, say, okay, it's by a wildlife corridor, or do a little more analysis, or it's next to a small core habitat area, do a little more analysis. <laughs> next. And then, of course, there's the our, the great um, uh, ULART plan that was a conservancy so, adopted recently. So, so, Paul, let me just interject here. If we can go back to the last one. Okay. Um, this is a, a small portion of the area. Uh, in November, uh, we had the uh, folks uh, east of the 405 freeway in the Santa Monica Mountains voted themselves uh, an additional um, Mellow Roost district 
uh, Community Facilities District, and that will yield the uh, MRCA uh, almost two million dollars a year. And I want to point out that passed by an eighty-two point three percent support. Now, as I commented, I can't go to you know when I was going to a to a real time. Um, uh, <laughs> dinner party, I couldn't get 80% of the people to agree to any proposition. And this just shows the tremendous support that we have for the work that we do when people are willing to say, yes, go ahead and tax me for that. And I think that's a really important thing to recognize. So uh, I'm interjecting that in here, all in the good work and the fact that you and your staff have, uh, and, and, and uh, the park rangers have been able to produce for this community, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, and. Thank you. Thank you. So look at all these different projects, a lot of them nature based in the upper Los Angeles River watershed. The next slide will show an example of what those projects can look like here in the Hanson Dam spreading grounds. Uh, obviously, this could have a lot of biodiversity, particularly from uh, different kinds of birds. Next. And then uh, uh, something that's so forgotten that is if we're going to save 30% of the land in California, a lot of that's gotta be in easements, whether they're open space or conservation easements. And you need entities, particularly government entities, to hold them and to monitor them and to manage the land. And the importance of the, the JPAs comes about here in this sense, particularly the MRCA, uh, because without, without the easements, without the entities to hold them, we can't rack up that acreage. Next. And as far as restoration, there's so much to do. Uh, here's an example of uh, creating riparian forest in Soledad Canyon, the current project the MRC is working on, funded by WCB, as far as creating forest for greenhouse gas sequestration. Uh, this is an amazing project. Next. Same thing with tree planting, too. This is a ULV, uh, up the old Amundsen Ranch. Um, uh, planting, we're planting 1,500 native trees on this property as far as greenhouse gas sequestration, and it could be a potential grant program with additional funding for us to uh, steward and fund additional projects like this. Next. And then of course, we're working on the, the coastal access projects. There's so many of them, the coastal slope trail. I mean, look at it, it's almost like you can't even, the dots are contiguous along the coastline there as far as that access work. The next slide is a zoom in of that. This gives you more of a, that more zoom out slide gives you more of a context. So look at all the different little colored triangles there that the MRCA and the Conservancy are working on for coastal access and public access, along with the coastal slope trail there in purple. Next. And I think this is the last slide. And of course, there's the Rim of the Valley Trail kind of the root of a lot of activities, the Pacific Crest Trail up in that northern area there, which is the yellow line to the north. And then you can see the coastal access points on the coastal slope trail also in this slide. That'll do it. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to just focus again with the um, very, I mean, it's going to happen. So the expansion of the Rim of the Valley Trail Corridor into the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area is going to be a game changer. We have, since 78, uh, been one of the <laughs> number one uh, partners with the NPS on this. And when we move into a whole new, what is it, a, a more than double the acreage of, much more than double the acreage of the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. We are here um, to help them. And I've been quoted as saying, you know, we have 8,000 acres in the Santa 
Clara Woodland, Santa Clarita Woodlands, uh, maybe those ought to be the first donation to the National Park Service. So exciting things are happening in the future. Uh, let's not let COVID be a, any kind of a damper to what we can do for natural resources in the 30 by 30.